Humanity is called to recognize the need for changes of lifestyle, production, and consumption in order to combat this global warming, or at least the human causes which produce or aggravate it. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The parable of the rich fool. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. You fool, this very night your soul will be demanded of you, and all your possessions, whose will they be? What a powerful gospel we hear today. Close your eyes and imagine for a moment if God were addressing these very words to you right now. If you were to hand over your soul to the Lord tonight, what would become of all your possessions? Reflect for a moment on all the things that you have. We are living today in a throwaway society, as Pope Francis calls it. In fact, 70% of all greenhouse gas emissions come from the production and implementation of products, things used for fashion, transportation, etc. The average American throws away 4.6 pounds of trash every day. That equates to 1,600 pounds of waste per person every year. Scientists predict by the year 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. That is truly a throwaway society. What would Jesus say if he were to come and witness the way in which we live? Perhaps the most disheartening part of this is witnessing the immense waste that could have been used for a greater good. It's this disparity that constitutes a social and environmental injustice. For example, all of the food that's currently wasted in Africa could actually feed 300 million people in Africa. All of the fossil fuels and energy used to produce that food is wasted. I believe Mother Teresa put it best when she once said, I only feel angry when I see waste, when I see people throwing away the things that we can use. It's time for a paradigm shift. With global temperatures rising at an alarming rate, if we're not proactive in shifting away from a fossil fuel economy, we will have to pay the price. A wise Native American leader named Chief Seattle once said, the earth does not belong to man. Man belongs to the earth. Man did not weave the web of life. He's merely a strand in it. Whatever he does to the web, he does to himself. So we must be mindful that whatever we do to the earth, we inevitably do to ourselves, especially the poor. Dozens of countries around the world are already audaciously showing us that we can reduce, reuse, and recycle. Moving away from a fossil fuel-based economy to a more integral ecology. For example, in 2018, France became the first country in the world to build a fully recycled road by using ground up and repurposed materials from the roads. And in 2016, they became the first country to ban supermarkets for, from throwing away good quality but unsold food. And they required that they instead donate that to charity or food banks. 
how amazing and inspirational. And to give a simpler example on an individual level, Lauren Singer showed the whole world that we can minimize our ecological footprint when she switched to a zero waste lifestyle. And she fit one year's worth of trash in a single mason jar. Thank you, Lauren Singer, for showing us that we can live in integral ecology. It seems impossible at first, but in solidarity and with firm faith in the Lord, this can be achieved. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as the gospel reminds us, let us share our rich harvest with our neighbor because God gave us the earth to be stewards of the earth, to cultivate and to care for it. Today, I invite you to reflect on all your possessions and lifestyle and ask yourself, what can I share with my neighbor? What lifestyle changes is the Lord inviting me to make so I can help live more sustainably and help combat global warming? And let us act now without delay. More importantly, however, I'd like to close with the words of Pope Francis. Let us sing as we go. May our struggles and our concern for our planet never take away the joy of our hope.